Welcome to BIMS TV. My name is Amanda Hodo, and today we're taking a bite out of fish reproductive strategies. So fish have a lot of really unique reproductive strategies and patterns. And with these reproductive strategies, fertilization can either be internal or external. And then the nourishment that those embryos get can either come directly from mom or from something like a yolk. In live bearing fish, they do internal fertilization. So the eggs will develop inside of the female, they'll get their nourishment from her, and then the live bearing mom will give birth to free living larvae or juveniles that require no parental care once they're born. So some examples of these would be guppies or mollies like the ones in the photo. Egg layers, by contrast, their eggs are fertilized externally. So they'll actually release those eggs into sperm. And then after that fertilization process occurs, those embryos will develop outside of mom. Now I said outside of, but not necessarily away from mom. So these embryos will actually have a protective egg membrane because like I mentioned, they're developing outside of mom. So they need a little bit of extra protection because they're out braving the elements. And then in addition to that, they need nutrition and they're outside of the mom, so they'll get nutrition from yolks. So some examples of egg layers are mouth brooders or pouch brooders. And this photo is of a jawfish mouth brooding. So you can see that it's actually holding all of those embryos in its mouth where they will develop. And then eventually once they become larvae, they will be on their own and they'll swim out and brave the new world. And this is an example of a pouch brooder. So seahorses, like the pot belly seahorses in the photo, um, the female will transfer her eggs to the male via an ovipositor. And then the male will actually carry those, those eggs. He'll fertilize them. And then he'll carry them in that pouch specifically designed to hold seahorse babies. So they actually will have a something similar to an umbilical cord um, where they will get their nutrients directly from the male seahorse. So not the female that I mentioned, but the male is providing that parental care and that nourishment. Now in hermaphroditism, it can either be successive or synchronous and successive meaning it switches from one sex to the other, typically female to male or synchronous, which means that the, the fish has both male and female reproductive organs at the same time. So some examples of these are antheus, like the ones in the photo, clownfish or anemone fish, and belted sandfish, which, fun fact, can switch sex in just a handful of seconds, and they can switch back and forth. So this is just a close-up of a harem of antheus. So the three females are the top three, the golden ones, and then the one on the bottom is actually a male, and these are square spot antheus. So what happens is, is if the male passes away or disappears, then one of the females will switch to male and not just reproductive organs. They outwardly will then turn and transform into the male. So they'll get red, they'll get that nice purple square spot on them, they'll get bigger in size sometimes. Um, so it's really, really an amazing, amazing reproductive strategy. Now, parthenogenesis is actually asexual reproduction that can occur in fish. And this is the development of embryos without fertilization. So because of this, they can only produce female offspring. And even though this isn't the main reproductive strategy of sharks like zebra sharks and bonnethead sharks, it has been observed in these species as well as other fish. So feel free to contact me if you have any other questions about fish and reproductive strategies. Um, I check Instagram the most, so. And then thank you for tuning in and please follow, like, and subscribe to Black and Marine Science. Thank <laughs> you.